the next topic which we'll be dealing today in parallel programming is about thread hierarchy and vector addition we have already covered in previous session what is a thread hierarchy it shows the uh, internal software view of your CUDA. As I told you, CUDA is nothing but a platform which will make a GPU to work by writing a program here. And for CUDA, it is not a new programming language as I've been telling you. You either implement your construct in C or C++ and try to make your GPU to work according to your operations, what you want to implement. So from uh, as we know, CPU is known as your host and device is known as your GPU. Whenever you have a kernel function or the function to be executed by the GPU, it will be handing over the control to your GPU. Internally, uh, you have multiple blocks and uh, the collection of these blocks, we have a, we call it as a grid. And each block, when I take in this example as block of one comma one, you could see the multiple threads. So the collection of threads, we call it as a block. So this is a internal software view of your CUDA. Now we'll see how to use them in our programming constructs. As we in the previous session, we have only seen a program where you can print a statement onto the monitor. You did not copy any data from the GPU to the CPU, nor you did not copy the result back into the GPU. It was only printing a statement onto the monitor. Now, when you want the data to be passed between your CPU and your GPU, we need to first understand uh, what is the CUDA processing flow, or you can call it as data processing in CUDA or processing flow on CUDA, anything. So initially, whatever you do, you have a separate memory for your CPU and a memory for your GPU. And this is your GPU, which is known as a device and you have your CPU, which is known as your host. So initially, the data from your CPU has to be copied into your GPU and then the CPU will give an instruction to the GPU saying that you in, uh, execute this operation. So based on the data provided in the memory of the GPU, the GPU will execute the instructions by making use of multiple codes which are present inside your uh, compute unit. And once the day execution is done, the result will be sent back, uh, stored in your GPU actually. From the GPU, the result has to be passed back to your CPU because input and output both are to be provided. Input will be provided by the CPU and similarly output has to be provided back to the CPU. So these are the four important steps that are very uh, much important in your CUDA processing flow. And each of these steps have some operations which you have to implement it. Predefined operations are available. Coming to the first operation, what was it? You have to copy the input data from your CPU memory to the GPU memory. For that, first of all, you have to allocate the memory. So you have to create a memory in your CPU. And this memory creation in the CPU can be done using your static memory allocation or it can be done using your dynamic memory allocation, meaning that you declare the variables required for your operation. Similarly, when I say you have created a memory in your CPU, now you have to even create an empty location on the GPU so that you can transfer the data, right? So you need to create a memory in your GPU which doesn't have any content in it for that. We go for a function called as CUDA malloc. CUDA, may, uh, second word when you are writing, M, uh, starting letter should be capital. And the parameters of your CUDA malloc would be the address of the pointer variable. Address of the pointer. Normally, when you go for your malloc function, malloc function will return the address of the memory that is been allocated. So instead of returning the address here, you just provide the address of the pointer variable so that the address will be present in this. And you have to even specify what is the amount of memory that is to be allocated. So if you want to use it in your program, it is CUDA malloc. And since you don't know the type of data that will be stored here, I'm just declaring it as a void pointer. And this is the address of that particular pointer variable. And once the memory is being allocated, the address will be specified in this. And the amount of memory I want to allocate is 6 into size of int. And if I take it as 2 bytes, it will be 12 bytes of memory allocated and the address of it will be stored in a variable D. Once you have created uh, the memory in the CPU with the data, you have created a memory in the GPU. Now, what is the next thing you have to do? You have to transfer the data from the CPU to your GPU. For that, we have a function known as CUDA memcopy, CUDA memory copy, where 
it takes a destination pointer variable a source pointer variable and this is nothing but your cpu variable in other terms and this is nothing but your gpu variable where you want the data from the source to be moved on to your destination and the amount of memory you want to copy and you have to even specify to the system whether you are copying the data CUDA mem copy host to device so when i specify it as host to device it is from cpu to gpu the other way around you can even transfer the data from a gpu to the cpu so when do you transfer the data from gpu to the cpu for the output so in that case you will be using the same function of CUDA mem copy but the last argument would be CUDA mem copy device to host whereas when you are taking the input from the cpu the argument would be CUDA mem copy host to device so here if i want to transfer the data from cpu to gpu so CUDA mem copy this is my source destination variable this is my source variable this is the amount of memory which i want to copy and from where to where you are copying the data from cpu to gpu so now you are able to get the data onto your gpu what is the next step that you have to do in your CUDA processing flow you need to load the gpu program so whenever the cpu sees a function any function name followed by three angular brackets it will understand that it has to be executed by your gpu so the control will be transferred from the cpu to your gpu so gpu will execute the program that is being instructed by the cpu and finally it copies the result back from your uh, uh, copy the results from this is from your gpu memory to your cpu memory this has to be done in reverse case gpu to cpu where you have to just change the last parameter as CUDA mem copy device to host in order to perform all these things as we have seen the thread hierarchy we are to be very much clear about the blocks what are the blocks here what are the threads and what how do you get this block index now collection of your blocks uh, collection of your blocks we call it as a grid so if you want to know the number of blocks it can be either one dimensional or two dimensional so if you want to know the number of blocks arranged in the x dimension it is grid dim dot x and if you want to know the number of dimension of the blocks arranged in y direction it is grid dim dot y so if you can just see the pictorial representation or assume this is a grid and these are your blocks so this is a grid followed by your block block 0 block 1 2 3 so here when you see this you have arranged the blocks only in the x direction you don't have any blocks in your y direction so grid dim dot x would give you a value 4 because there are four blocks placed horizontally and along the y dimension you don't have any of the grids placed so the value of it would be 0 similarly when you want to know and each block will have multiple threads here so if you want to know you can even organize this threads row wise or you can even organize the threads in a block uh, in the form of a grid rows and columns so if there are threads only in the x direction the block dimension dot x will give the number of threads in x direction block dimension dot y will tell you the number of threads in y direction and in each of the thread and or each of the block if you have multiple blocks each block would be given an id right so you want to know the block id of each of the id so in x direction if you want to know it is block dimension in x direction block idx dot y will give block index in y direction and the block would be represented as 0 comma 1 internally so block idx dot x would return a value 0 block idx dot y would return a value 1 similarly when i go for a thread when it is horizontal when it is uh, represented in the form of two dimensional in the form of rows and columns thread idx dot x would give a value 2 thread idx dot y will give a value 1 just see the representation of your one dimensional grid so when i say one dimensional grid so how do you what do you have in a grid grid contains a block so if the blocks are present only in x direction only in one direction you say that grid as one dimensional similarly when do you say a block as one dimensional what do you have in a block you have a thread so if the threads are present only in x direction in one row then you say it is one dimensional block so you could see here this is a grid and this grid has four blocks which are placed one after the other horizontally and within the block if i see you have three threads of each block which are being 
arranged along the x axis so this is one dimensional grid and the one dimensional block because all of them only are at the x axis you don't have anything on your y axis so when you just see block 0.0, .0 block 1,0 means all your y values one is pertaining to your x axis other is pertaining to your y all i va y values are represented zero because you don't have any blocks in your y direction and this is block zero id of your first block block one block two and block three internally in the block you have three threads so four blocks multiplied with three threads so you have 12 threads and each of the thread should be given a unique id so that id would be ranging from 0 to 11. now we'll see how you get the actual calculation so thread it is zero in block zero it is represented as zero comma zero one comma zero two comma zero because y values are represented as zero because you do it is only in one dimensional similarly in block one the threads would be represented with the same representation as zero comma zero one comma zero and two comma zero if you want to know the thread id here it is block idx dot x into block dimension dot x plus thread idx dot x so for thread 2 comma 0 thread 2 comma 0 would be this particular thread uh, thread 2 comma 0 which is present in block 1 comma 0 so i want to calculate the id and what is the id you have to get you have to get a value as 5 so in that place block idx dot x what is block idx dot x 1 comma 0 so this is pertaining to x this is pertaining to y so thread uh, block idx dot x would be 1 into block dimension dot x uh, dim, uh, dim, dimension dot x so in x direction how many block how many threads you have in each block 3 so multiplied with 3 plus 2 thread idx dot x thread idx dot x this is your thread value where it is x and this is y so what it is your x value 2 so when i substitute these values in the formula you get a value 5 and this is a unique id given to this particular thread so if you want to use in your calculation this would give you the id of each and every thread now when we move on to one dimensional grid of two dimensional blocks here so one dimensional grid means the blocks are arranged in the horizontal direction and two dimensional blocks means two dim when do you say a block as two dimensional if the threads are being arranged in a rows and columns so if you could see the block block you have a thread two rows and three columns so this is two dimensional and we have a specific formula for calculating the thread id similarly when you go for two dimensional grid of one dimensional block so when i say two dimensional grid blocks are arranged in the rows and columns so you have two blocks two blocks two rows and two columns the blocks are being arranged and when you say one dimensional block you consider each block so in the block the threads are only in your x direction so you call it as one dimensional and we have a formulas for block id as well as thread id and substituting them would be giving you the result and two dimensional grid of two dimensional blocks here blocks would be arranged in the form of a, a matrix similarly what do you have in a block threads so thread will also be in the form of a matrix so this is your two dimensional grid and two dimensional blocks so depending upon the application of your uh, CUDA programming we can either go for one dimensional grid or two dimensional grid in one dimensional you have a one dimensional block two dimensional block similarly in two dimensional we have one dimensional block and a two dimensional block so these are the different representation of your hierarchy of the threads now when we just see an example of a vector addition here this is a simple example of a vector addition and here i'm just uh, taking a one dimensional right a one dimensional block if you could see this is a function definition as you all know you need to start your kernel function with two underscores global two underscore void is your return type and add is your function name and it takes two parameters two vector addition is similar to that of your one dimensional array addition where you, these two are your inputs and this is your output now here we are taking a thread id we are taking a thread id so this can be implemented using a single block i can go for one block with multiple threads or you can go for multiple blocks so i have multiple blocks five blocks right and each one has a thread here so this can be implemented either in this way or this way so this is multiple blocks 
and this is a single block so when i have a single block i need to get only the thread id and when i have multiple blocks since you have only one thread here i need to get the id of the blocks so if you want if you are going for one block it is that you require a thread id and since it is present only in the row direction you go for thread id x dot x and if you are going for multiple blocks and a thread is only one you go for block id x dot x so this will give you an id so this calculation is very much important and when you are performing your addition you need not go for any looping statement you need to just write f of id is equal to d is my input e is my input e of id plus d of id so this would be repeated for the number of threads or the number of blocks so when you actually see the main part of it i'm just declaring my cpu variables a of phi and b of phi with the values installed so you have your cpu memory with the values ready with the input ready in other terms whereas uh, these three pointers are pertaining to your gpu variables so gpu d is e and f so d is for one input d is for other input f is for your other input so what is that you have to do you have allocated your cpu and you have allocated your gpu memory so, uh, you need to allocate your gpu memory so if you want to allocate it is CUDA malloc void star star what is the input uh, you require d and how much amount of data how much value it wants to take five values right and what data type of its size of in so it goes for declaring so you are just declaring a memory for d similarly you will declare a memory for e and you declare a memory for f so all these are pertaining to your gpu and the data is not present in any of the things the data is present in the cpu variables a comma b so what is the next thing you have to do you have to transfer the data from a to d and you have to transfer the data from b to e and what is the function we go for using CUDA mem copy the destination would be d and your in uh, source is nothing but your a so your this is your source how much amount of data 10 bytes of data and from where to where you are copying the data it is from cpu to your gpu so a values are copied into d similarly your b values will be copied into e it is not that the values are getting copied a pointer uh, d will contain the address of all these values now after this the next CUDA processing operation is we have to call your function so it is add with three angular brackets three angular brackets one comma phi it means that you have one block and one block has five threads in it so that is the reason since they are multiple threads here you go for thread id and uh, you if you want to go for multiple blocks it is phi comma one so number of blocks are phi and one so in either of the case it goes for add adding two uh, one dimensional arrays of five elements each and once your operation is done you have to again copy the result back so from where you have to copy the results so from your gpu to your cpu so f value has to be dumped into c and when you want to finally print your result where is your result present in c and c is a cpu variable you can use your looping and since the day, uh, malloc function allocates the memory it is a responsibility of the user to deallocate the memory for all the gpu and finally go we go for CUDA device synchronize where you want the CPU to wait till the GPU has performed its operation so this is a simple program of vector addition we'll be seeing two-dimensional addition in the next class